Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel and we are back for another video as I do a match review to our game of the weekend against Southampton. I mean, wow. First and foremost, what a game this was. Unbelievable entertainment. You know, both teams trying to attack, you know, just going at each other. And it was just... A brilliant advert for the championship and look th this kind of proves what I, be, what I say a lot at the time yeah the championship is the best league in England for me because anybody can be anybody and plus you'd, when, you, when you see teams that are up against each other like this obviously one right at the top another one obviously near the bottom you don't see that in the Premier League in terms of teams at the bottom maybe putting up such a fight that we did. But anyway, I'm just waffling on right now. But yeah, honestly, this game was special. Um, and now, obviously, I've had a few days now to obviously um, kind of take everything in, obviously. I think on, on the, day of the day of the game, obviously, after the game, it's always kind of that you got to just kind of think about things and obviously just clear your mind obviously it's always hard to take isn't it after 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 a defeat like this but now a few days have gone i reflect on it very positively let me tell you because my goodness we pushed southampton all the way um you know southampton who are one of the best sides in the division we literally took the game to them and the game plan and everything was just super the effort the passion the commitment it was all there from us and, and and i'm honestly so proud of the lads for of battling you know and showcasing what they can do because you know this team isn't as bad as what we've all been saying all season you know I know people have said you will lack a lot of quality. Yes, we do. But this just proves that we have got a good core group here. Yeah, we need, you know, you know not saying we've got the best sign, but, you know, we've got some good players in this team. If you utilise the systems correctly, if you stick to your game plan, play positively, have a go, then you can win football games. And that's obviously been proved, obviously, last week, especially... Um, and yeah, today and yeah, on Saturday, on Saturday as well. I think we literally we could have won the game. So yeah, honestly. But anyway, I'm gonna get into it now. Um, before we do get going, obviously, please make sure you smash the like, subscribe if you're new, and comment your thoughts down below on what you made of this game because I'm sure we've all got a lot to say about it because. Honestly, it was it, it it was just incredible. Nobody anticipated a high-scoring game like this. Absolutely not. And we certainly didn't expect to go to Southampton and score three goals. That's for sure. But yeah, it just proves what you can do with the change of mentality and you know instilling confidence in these players. And and I think Worthy's done that absolutely to a T since he's took the reins. Um, temporarily but yeah let's get into the lineup then so obviously we we saw the lineup obviously notable ab absentee of Balka Helic Helic was missing um, obviously too soon for him obviously he's in trade so I think he should be in contention for Wednesday surely now um, it was a massive blow to you know for Helic not to be back for this game because obviously we know how big of a player he is for us at the back and also going forward, let's not forget. But at the back, he's solid, reliable, and I know it's all ifs, buts, and maybes. But had we have maybe had the likes of Helic and Balka, would we have maybe defended Southampton's goals a bit better? We don't know, do we? But I just think with Helic at the back, you really do set the foundations there with him in that in that back line. So yeah, um, it's one of those though. Uh, Balki, yeah, he obviously missed the game through illness. I mean, the second time he's been ill in two weeks. I mean, 
it's just unbelievable, isn't it? I'm not sure what what he's picked up now, but um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I just I just thought, what on earth is happening? But he's one of those. Obviously, he missed the game. Rodoni and Kasumu came back into the falls, into the starting eleven after their illness last weekend. Um, Nakiyama obviously came into the side, obviously, after returning from the Asian Cup as well. I mean, if you look at the formation, let's go through the, the uh, team full, fully now. Uh, obviously, Nichols in goal, Nakiyama, Lees and Pearson as the back three. And then we had Brody Spencer and Kasumu um, on the wing with Hogg and Matos in the middle. Then we had three up front, um, Sauber Thomas on the left, Josh Cromer down the middle, and Jack Ridone on the right. Um, but yeah, obviously, I, I thought this was a good lineup. Obviously, probably the best line we could have fielded anyway, um, just to begin with. Um, the different formation as well, no, so obviously 3-4-3, three, three, which you could see that was, you know, a very attacking formation. It wasn't a, you know, a free, um, what did we play? 3-4-2-1, or oh, what was the formation? I can't remember now, but obviously it wasn't the formation that we utilised under Darren Moore, because to be honest with you, his formation was so predictable, I've already forgotten how he used to set up the team. I just used to know that he used to have five at the back. Well, ten men behind the ball and five at the back. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah. There, slight tweaking formation. But, yeah, like I said, let's, let's get into the game. So, obviously, the first half, I mean, wow. This first half was incredible by us. The game plan, how we played, we nullified Southampton. We kept their forwards quiet. We didn't allow them space. We really pressed it, pressed them, and it was superb. The first half, I don't think, obviously, it, it, it was brilliant from us. We, we we set the gate, we set the tone of the game, we took the game to them, and, and we really did um, showcase what we could do here. Um, and obviously, the goal that we scored, first goal we scored, brilliant piece of play. Um, it really was obviously Sauber takes the ball forward and obviously sprays it out to the left of Spencer Redoni making the running down the line um, gets the ball passes it across with pace great delivery in Get, goes, goes all the way to Sauber Thomas and strikes it beautifully into the back of the net 1-0 obviously 36 minutes on the clock and yeah, great goal, great team goal, great build up, positive thinking play. And um, we just kept going at them throughout this thing. We just kept going and going and going. It was just, you know, if you're going to lose a game, I think you lose it like this, put it that way. Because yeah, we don't want to lose the game. But if you're going to lose the game, leave it all out there on the pitch. Give it your all, give it 110%. And keep, you know, playing positively and never giving up. And that's exactly what we did in this game. It it it, it, it was just a joy joy to watch. I know that obviously Worthington said before the game, obviously in his press conference, that we weren't going there just to sit back. <laughs> My, let me tell you, we, we we didn't sit back at all, and 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 then some. We absolutely went for it. We did, and you know, I think that we. I think we played better than I expected us to. I thought we'd play well, but I didn't think we'd play as well as this, um, to be honest with you. But yeah, it, again, it just proves what you can do with the right mentality and um, the right approach to games. And yeah, just give, just go out there and and give it a go, you know. So it's a brilliant first goal, obviously. Um, we deserved it as well in that first half because we, we really did play well, really strong, um, and we were better than them in that first half, no question. 
Um, so yeah, and then obviously another fantastic goal here for the second, just on the stroke of half time. We couldn't believe our luck. Uh, but yeah, I mean, obviously, Radoni obviously flicks a header on from Lee Nichols' goal kick. Um, then obviously, um, stretching Brody spends and manages to find Thomas. Who obviously then gets himself set, sets himself in motion, the pace, the skill, you know, breezes past the likes of Kyle Walker, Walker Peters on his way, um, and then into the penalty area he goes, pulls it across, Kasumu there ready to pound, smashes it home, brilliant finish, and you know this <laughs> this finish was really good, and I've I've questioned Kasumu in the past about his composure in front of goal because I think he's been quite poor. And this was this was a harder chance than what he's had maybe in in previous games, you know, in terms of opportunities. So the fact that he was able to to hit, to hit the back of the net with that was a great strike. I think again, I just think it goes back to the fact is that Worthington's instilled confidence in this group, and you know, Kasumu showed his composure. In front of goal and, and he yeah brilliant so yeah half time obviously we we see out it at two 0 and yeah we were literally in dreamland at that point I you know <laughs> I just couldn't believe um, what I was seeing really um, I think like I said we just kept going we just kept going forward at every opportunity so positive. Um, in that first half like I say we didn't give them any time on the ball when they did have it because obviously they did have quite a bit of the ball too because they do like possession but but their forwards was limited to half chances if that and I just think they were very quiet we, we got stuck in you know and we didn't give them time and it was the perfect half you know the game plan and everything was superb from us so yeah, brilliant half. Obviously, the second half. Yeah, I mean, the start of the second half, I think, is what really cost us um, in terms of the result. Um, because, obviously, we did have that cushion. I think if you see out the first 20 minutes or so of that half, and it's still... Um, 2-0 to, two nil to us, then we would have been a lot better place to get the victory. But I'm not so, you don't know, do you, if you, you know, but hindsight's a wonderful thing. But I do think if we would have maybe started the second half like we finished the first, you know, we would have, I think we would have won the game. But that's just kind of my opinion. Um, but yeah, Southampton obviously get an early call in the second half. He punched away by Nichols straight to Rothwell, who hits it first time on the volley. A great strike, by the way, into the top corner. Uh, really good finish by him in all fairness. But I, what I will say from our perspective is that he could have been avoided this, I think. Um, I don't want to be hypercritical because I think, look, we, we left it all out there and we, you know, we, we ultimately, we, we did our best. But I just think he obviously... Nichols, that punch was a bit weak, maybe push, punching it out. I mean, if you're punching it, I think you need to, you know, you need to punch it away from the goal, not straight into danger. Um, I think the space that Rothwell had on the edge of the penalty area um, was too much. I'm not sure why he was left on alone. Um, and I think to concede from a set piece as well was obviously disappointing too. But... Yeah, obviously, they get the goal. Good goal from them, 49th minute, and they're back in it. And then Southampton starts to step it up a bit then. I think that they start to find their rhythm fully in terms of their passing. <clears throat> um, David Brooks obviously gets onto the ball. A beautiful pass through to Rothwell, who again is through on goal. Loads of space, uh, and he wasn't missing from there. Good strike from him. Uh, strikes it past Nichols. Uh, like I said, 
I think the defending was questionable. <clears throat> the amount of space that he was allowed. And obviously, then at that point, you know, two goals within the space of a minute or so. And you think to yourself, yeah, this this could where we just it runs away from us now. But you know what? This is where I have to credit the lads again. Because we showed we showed real character after, you know, obviously conceding them early goals. Um you know, the, the response was just brilliant and we we kept going and we kept attacking at every opportunity. Um but like I say, I think that lee, that cushion that we did have, we did need um, when we let it slip ultimately. And I think that's where the game kind of did get ahead of, and get away from us. Having said that, though, we did actually go on to take the lead again. And again, brilliant goal. The passing from us in the build to our, our goal, this goal was really good as well. You know, Redone. Redone in that team makes a massive... I know he's got his critics in terms of yeah, he can be wasteful in front of goal and things like that. But Redon is always involved in our attacks when we, when we, you know, whenever we go forward. So yes, he may be lacking that finishing touch sometimes, but he's always there trying to make things happen. He's always, you know, he's always involved in the goals. But anyway, um, see Spencer pulls it back from Matos just outside the left-hand corner of the penalty area. Strikes it makes it takes a, a big deflection off Smallbone and it loops over the keeper. And Matos, obviously credited with the goal, he deserved to be credited with the goal because I think obviously he did take the chance. The same goes if you don't shoot, you don't score, and this is ex a prime example of that. Uh, Matos getting his first professional goal, um, really happy for him. He's, he's earned it as well, you know, he really has because I think, yeah. I think he's just impressed since he's come through the door to me. So I've really liked what I've seen. And he's just got better and better and better the more we've seen him. And I think it's a case of now with Matos is that the more we see of him, the, obviously the final 15 games left of the season, he'll keep improving the more games he gets. So, um, and like I say, he's always going to be starting uh, for us because he's shown what he can do and he's really cemented his place and not starting 11 now already. Um, within the space of a few weeks since he came through the door. But yeah, obviously that was in the 65th minute we managed to um, go ahead again. You're thinking to yourself, right then, let's try and, you know, keep going, you know, keep all the ball, try and just, um, you know, just do what we did in the first half, you know, that's similar, not allow them to spit time on the ball. But obviously, as the match goes on, you do start to lose energy. You start to lose your legs, you know, obviously. And, you know, it's very hard to keep that intensity up, I suppose, from the first half that we showed. But, yeah, but you think to yourself, let's just keep it solid again. Let's keep it solid for the next 20 minutes. And we should be all right then. But, obviously, Brody Spencer then had to come off, unfortunately. And, by the way, Brody Spencer was superb so impressive again in this match honestly and the fact that he had to come off obviously was a big blow for us to be honest with you and yeah um and it's one of those isn't it really in terms of that obviously who came on for him jackson ben jackson came on and I think Ben Jackson kind of struggled to get up to speed with things, really. It's no surprise, really, because obviously the intensity of the game, obviously the speed of the game was just unbelievable. So I, I, I don't, I'm not going to sit here and criticise Ben Jackson for that, but yeah, he did struggle when he came on. And it was a shame that Spencer, Spencer couldn't stay on, obviously was struggling a little bit. Um, because, yeah, he just put in so much energy and work. Um, and I think he kind of took a knock, to be honest. I think that's why he came off, um, from what I remember. Um, obviously, Pat Jones came on for um, 
Karoma in the 77th minute. Obviously, Karoma put a massive shift in again um, as the um, mid the central striker for us. And yeah, he did he, he did his but he did well, you know, at times and caused problems as well with his runs and his. Um, yeah, I've, I've, I think he, he had a good game again, Karoma, to be honest with you. And then obviously Southampton equalise and this was a really scruffy goal to be honest with you. I think obviously Rothwell plays the ball across the penalty area and Lees obviously puts it into his own net. I mean, yeah, obviously his body position was not right. Uh, back to goal, stretching, he took it past Nichols and yeah, obviously they now had momentum. Obviously 3-3, free, free, 80th minute, plenty of time left and um, you know, it's just one of those, you kind of feared the worst at this point then. Um, then obviously they, obviously they took the lead. Um, I have to think, just have a look here. They took the lead courtesy. Of a Seku Mara goal, I think, yeah, obviously, good quality. This guy is a brilliant player, obviously. And if you look at it, the subs that came onto Southampton were the ones that made the difference, you know. Um, that just shows the strength and depth of their squad. Um, and then, obviously, in two injury time, they managed to get another goal. Um, And um, yeah, game set and match really. But obviously, final thoughts of this game though. Look, I go back to what I said earlier. The performance that we showed in this game, the players should take a lot of confidence from, absolutely. And the pride, they all deserve to wear that Terrier shirt, let me tell you, because they were superb. Um, I, I think that. You know, if, if, if you look at how we applied ourselves in how, how we applied ourselves in this game from minute one, and the approach, the mentality, the you know, the constant threat that we posed going for every time we went forward, it looked like we were going to score, uh, which you know we haven't said that much this season at all, have we? And the fact that we've actually scored. Seven goals in two games says all you need to know about the approach and how, how how you know how much you know how much if you play to your strengths and you, and you give it a go and you play positively you you can get results and score goals um, and yeah it, it, I think the fact that we played well for the majority of the game. Um, and we didn't. We still didn't come away with anything. It does hurt. It's gutting for us. But I just think we have to look at it in a, in a way of we took Southampton all the way to the end. We pushed them all the way. A team that are up there in the top two in the division, one of the best sides in the division, um, and we gave them the the be the best match they've had at St Mary's because. And that's not my words about that. I've seen it on social media. Southampton fans praising us for how well we did play, you know, saying that it was, it was the best side that have come to St. Mary's this season. And that just speaks volumes to how well we actually did play in this match. And, yeah, it was one of those. But I, I, I do think, though, in this game, I think the quality from the bench was the really crucial bit about this, really, isn't it? Because... They've got so much quality and, you know, as the game went, obviously the lads have put so much effort in. I know we'd made a few substitutions as well, but the lads put so much effort in and, yeah, they've run out of steam, I think, in the end. But you can't fault the effort, the, the, you know, the commitment, the passion. You know, as I said, they approached the game with spot on. And, yeah, we obviously we came... We, we we came short this time, but we can you know we lost the game, but we actually can take a lot from it and take a lot of confidence from it. And now going to these next two games, both at home, both games we can win. Absolutely, we can win. 
um, then we just have to push on now and just use it to our advantage. You know, we we you know, we're disappointed with the result, but um, it's it's one of those where you have to put a bit of perspective on things in terms of. There were moments in the game that we could have managed better, absolutely, and defending and, and things I've said wasn't the best. But I'm not going to sit here and be overcritical because what I saw out there was what we, what I saw out there is is everybody digging in and, and doing their best and put and showing pride in in that shirt in that shirt they're wearing and that that's all you can ask. They couldn't. They could have defended properly, but I'm just mean overall. They couldn't have done any more than they did. They 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 pushed. They pushed and they pushed and they never gave up. Um, but yeah, like the quality from Southampton was just told in the end, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, so we move on to the next game. No time to dwell on this result because we have got a game on Wednesday. So let's see how we get on there. Um, you know, the stadium will be bouncing again on Wednesday, um, like it was against Sheffield Wednesday um, last week. And yeah, we, we can go to the game looking forward to it, knowing that we will give it our all. And and um, yeah, that's all, that's all you want to see. So anyway, guys, that's it from me. Um, thank you all for, for watching. Please make sure you do smash the like, subscribe if you're new, and comment your thoughts down below on this game. Um, but yeah, wow, what a game um, in the cha championship. But I'll be back live tomorrow. Um, back doing my lives tomorrow for um, as we do a, a preview to our game against Hull City on Wednesday night. So stay tuned for that. Um, and yeah thank you all for watching thank you for your support and I'll see you all very very soon take care everybody up the town John Worthington's Barmy Army come on